right. So it looks like we have uh, maybe a good quorum on the on the phone here, so we can get started. So welcome everyone to the uh, South Sig Data Hub Data Sharing and Infrastructure Working Group. Uh, this is uh, hopefully going to be one of the last in a series of demos we've been doing since last fall uh, at the recommendation of uh, Regan Moore to uh, showcase some demonstrations on the core components that would make up uh, cyber infrastructure support for the hub, um, uh, including uh, the Data Federation. And, um, so with that, we've got three uh, wonderful speakers set up today. I'll introduce uh, the first one. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing this correctly, Hao Zhu. Uh, Hao uh, Zhu is a research scientist at the Data Intensive Cyber Environment Center, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He's been working on improving the rule engine and rule language and the metadata catalog of the integrated rule-oriented data system known as IROD since 2010. He developed pluggable rule engine architecture that allows interoperability between different programming languages and the IROD's data management system. His research interests include theory of data management, automatic theorem proving, programming languages, distributed data systems, and formal methods in software development. He has a Bachelor's of Engineering in Computer Science and Engineering and a BF Bachelor of Science minor in Applied Math from Beihang Bay University and a PhD in Computer Science from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Um, I'm going to ask this of all my speakers. Uh, if you could make sure, if you use any technical jargon, to be sure to explain it, um, because we have folks on this call from multiple different disciplines and uh, want to make sure we have a common language so we can all follow each other's presentations. Uh, with that, I'll hang it, uh, hand it over to Dr. Zhu. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> um, uh, so I, I'm going to start my presentation. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, Query Arrow. Query Arrow is a software that I've been developing since, uh, uh, I think it's since the year before. It's been like one year and a half since I started developing Query Arrow, and the uh, the goal is to create a, uh, a software uh, that allows us to do bidirection integration of multiple metadata sources. Uh, so I understand there's a lot of technical jargon here, So, but, hope, but I'll explain most of them during the presentation, so hopefully everybody will get a basic idea of what Query Arrow does and how it could potentially help your projects uh, at the end of the presentation. So, um, um, so acknowledgement. Uh, so here's some resources. So the first, um, so because this presentation is supposed to be a very high level one, so I think some folks in the audience, if you would like to uh, get a little bit more details or technical details and uh, uh, what makes Query Arrow unique compared to similar uh, projects on the internet? Uh, you can there's a, um, a technical report uh, you can find on the internet. <clears throat> uh, so and also there's a GitHub rep repository uh, where you have uh, built instructions for building Query Arrow and the basic uh, <clears throat> information. It's it's not uh, like a, a huge whole user manual, but it's it just one page, you, but it, it can, it, it gets, uh, you can help you get started with Query Arrow. So then there's, um, and this is what kind of sets Query Arrow apart from other pro similar projects, is Query Arrow is actually part of the Query Arrow, especially the Query Arrow language, which I'll talk about a little bit later, has been formally specified, which means the semantics is being, is specified in a, in, in a, in a kind of a machine checkable format, so you can prove certain properties of the language, so the, which is uh, kind of important for these kind of applications. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about a few motivating applications. So one of the motivating applications is kind of like a data aggregation. So this actually comes from uh, when we develop IROD. Uh, IROD has a metadata catalog and um, but over time, people want to uh, keep keeps asking this question, right? If I have metadata outside IROD, it's say, let's say I store this metadata in a graph database, right? 
uh, how how I, how I'm going to be able to uh, I um am I able to integrate my uh, metadata stored outside IRAS with uh, <clears throat> metadata stored inside IRAS and kind of present a u unified view of both metadata, right? So so uh, before query error, the, the answer was it was possible, but it was very ad hoc. It was uh, not easy to do, and also it's very error prone, which means you know you you. It might work for one case, but not necessarily for another case. So Arrow uh, tries to solve that problem. And uh, the, the second one is policies, for example, metadata access control. So access control for your uh, data, like, you know, people have all kinds of existing access control mechanisms, like groupers and things like that. So, so you know, maybe they, they want to use those. How, how do you integrate those in, into, your, uh, <clears throat> into your system? Um, discovery. Uh, so when basically this is when you have a huge uh, collection of data and uh, you, you have some sort of metadata tags on those data, right? So so how do you uh, efficiently uh, search for your data objects based on the metadata tags? So that's that's another thing that Query Arrow helps solve. Uh, the finally, last but not least, yeah, uh, finally the migration. So this is a big one because when you think about a metadata catalog, right? You you're, you think about metadata catalog not, as not just being a, a kind of transient a data store, but it's you may need this metadata like ten uh, in the future, right? So when the tech, underlying technology has changed, so how do you migrate from one technology to another without changing the semantics of the metadata. So that's another question, right? So, so because Query Arrow provides you with a kind of semantically unified, not just syntactically unified, not just a unified API, but also the, what the API does, the semantics is also unified. So, so this way you can uh, kind of have certain kind of higher, more uh, guarantee that uh, when you migrate your data, metadata into a new data technology, you, uh, you the, the meaning uh, the semantics of your metadata has not been changed. Okay, here's some some of the elements, design elements of Query Arrow. There's uh, the Query Arrow service, which is basically a, a service that runs on server. It's like uh, you know, it's like web server or something, but it's not really a web server. It, it, it it's kind of like a system uh, a service runs on a machine, and uh, what it does is allows you to register different data stores, and also it allows you to execute QAL. Uh, by QAL, <coughs> QAL is the short for Query Arrow language. So it's basically a, uh, a semantically unified language, which uh, is also formally specified. Uh, that gives you three things. One is configuration. It, allows, it gives you the uh, ability to configure the Query Arrow service. It gives you a QAL query language. It gives you the ability to query. And also it is a data manipulation language. It gives you the ability to uh, update. And then um, with the uh, the third element is Query Arrow plugins. So these are the things. These are the <clears throat> uh, the uh, the uh, the components that allows you to uh, go out to different data stores or databases. We'll show a diagram uh, example of how these comes together in the next slide. Uh, so um, so the other the fourth component is a IRAS plugin which allows IRAS to use Query Arrow as a Kind of a metadata catalog, so that uh, IRAS can through through Query Arrow, IRAS can get metadata from multiple places. This kind of uh, uh, answers the question one of the applications early I talked about, uh, one of the motivating applications I talked about earlier, uh, is that which is wh whether you can kind of integrate a graph DB, for example, into your metadata uh, into IRAS, right? So uh, as metadata, yeah. So query error specification. So this is also important, um, uh, which basically gives you the the uh, semantically unified instead of just API. You know, you know when when you say it's like a language, right? It's, you have spoken language. You you have this uh, maybe you have German, you have English, and they both uh, have the same word, the, the a word that spells the same, but they mean different things in different languages, right? That, so that's syntactically unified, but but their uh, semantics are totally different. So our goal is to 
uh, a query error is to, to be able to say our, our language is semantically unified in this sense, which means uh, uh, it doesn't matter which database you go to from the client point of view, it's completely transparent. So the client will always get the same data back when, when you issue the same query. Okay, so this here's, here's an example architecture. So in the middle is query error service. On the top, there's the query error database plugin, which basically interface with, uh, allows IROTs to interface with query error. And on the bottom, there are three uh, Q, QAP, which are query error plugins that allows query error to go to Postgres, QL, Neo4j, which is a GraphDB, and Elasticsearch, which is search engine. So, so basically, query error pr provides a unified view from IROTs point of view. Uh, all query error does is, uh, so either part of the query error is just one, data store, so to speak. You, you can think of that way. But underneath I query arrow, there there may be multiple different data stores. So this greatly simplified the uh, the uh, development of a client because a client doesn't have to uh, deal with multiple data stores. Of course, uh, you can also use query arrow as a standalone service. So, like if you have a, a different uh, uh, thing that you want to query, or query, query arrow directly, you can do that. So currently there are 15 uh, plugins. Um, uh, uh, notably, there's like policy support, which is translation, QAP. There's uh, there's the uh, Elasticsearch. There's Neo4j. There's Postgres SQL. There's SQLite 3. There's CockroachDB and there's file system. Uh, so file system is a, a, one of the new ones I, I added recently, which allows you basically query a file system. You can you can view your view. You can basically get all the metadata from a file system uh, out and and query it as if uh, it is uh, stored in a metadata store. So uh, I think I'm running uh, almost running out of time here now. So I just want to uh, so this slide just show you some of the uh, uh, things that you can query like that are like common tasks in data um, kind of data repositories. Like you can do uh, return all data objects IDs and their names etc. So you can not only do query, but you can also do insert, so the and delete. So, um, so I, I think I'm gonna stop here. Uh, I think I'm, I'm at 10 minutes now. So I, I actually I prepared two examples, but I wasn't uh, trying to uh, talk in the 10 minutes. And I think if someone asks, I, I can explain more. But uh, but I I think that's that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The question. Yes, I would like to see an example. Okay, uh, thanks, Rita. <laughs> okay, so uh, so this is an example uh, of uh, policy metadata access control. So uh, on the left hand side, there's uh, this. This is basically what currently uh, what, how this is basically current error simulating the current uh, what IDRAS currently does. IDRAS currently has this uh, Postgres plugin which goes to Postgres directly, and uh, it, it, it's it's impossible to go to two databases at the same time, let alone two different types of databases. Uh, so so but but when but but if with Query Arrow we can do a little bit more, so we can uh, kind of uh, uh, enhance what's shown on the left uh, with a new database. Uh, that is shown on the on the, which uh, which is new for J and, and the, the resulting system is shown on the right. So so the idea here is I added this new database which control uh, contains the access control data for the metadata because currently IROT doesn't provide um, IROT allows you to IROT does uh, full access control for all the data objects. But not for the, uh, but has a very primitive model for the metadata. So, but with this one, you can you can basically with query error, you can basically say, okay, I have a, a full access control mechanism for metadata, and I want to add it to IROS. Uh, you, you could you can do it with query error uh, by just you know just uh, integrate uh, just put this. Uh, uh, put a new QAP into query arrow, and then then the, the access control metadata becomes available. 
However, that doesn't mean that the asset trend control is being enforced. Just having the access control data available doesn't mean it's being enforced. So we need to write some uh, policies. So in the middle of this translation, QAP allows you to basically uh, create policies that kind of combines different uh, metadata from different uh, sources and, uh, and kind of enforce a certain kind of policy uh, uh, based on these metadata. For example, here, uh, uh, I, this is a baseline system without access control. So, so I have this meta cat. Uh, I defined a uh, a predicate meta basically. Uh, so, so without going too into too much details, you can think of this meta as representing the the whether the user could access the metadata or, uh, a, a metadata item or not, right? So in the baseline, it doesn't consult the access control data. You just go to you just go to IROT uh, the uh, the metadata directly, so you can insert, you can delete, you can query as much as you want, right? So then what we can do is we can add, we can import uh, this uh, access and control data from Neo4j uh, as shown next to the label one, and uh, we then we hide the raw metadata predicate. Uh, from the user's view are shown next to label two. So this way the user won't be able to access directly. And uh, and in the next slides, we define our new predicate that basically says, okay, I have to get the client ID of the client and I, I ask whether this client has read access uh, to this metadata item or not. If the client has read access, method, uh, uh, should read access, then I, I just go to the raw predicate and get the metadata back. If the client doesn't have, then this pre this predicate basically will return to the client saying, oh, you don't have, uh, you can't see this one. So basically the client won't be able to see it. Um, so of course we can even define rules like this one, like the second rewrite uh, here in the, in the middle here, uh, on the bottom here. So you can, so this rule basically says, uh, if you if you have read access, of course you have read access. But if you have a write access, you should you should also have read access. So this is consistent with IROC. Uh, this is just show you the flexibility of query error. You can also, of course you can say uh, if you have a write access, you don't automatically get read access. You can do that too. You just delete this line, the line that that basically gives you read access from write access. Um, for for insert, the same thing. A similar thing is basically says, uh, do I have uh, the right access to the uh, data object, right? So you so because you you want to say, oh, the user can only add metadata if they have a right access to the data object. So that's you can define here as next to label two, shown next to label two, and here delete. Uh, delete you, 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 is a little bit different from insert because it, when you insert a metadata, the metadata is not available yet. But when you delete, the metadata is, is available. So if you have, if, so here I'm just saying, okay. So if you have access to the data object, then you can delete the the uh, the metadata object. And here uh, you, um, so it's basically. Uh, however, when you delete a metadata object, you also have to delete the access uh, access control data for all other users that may have access to this metadata item because the metadata item is gone, right? You don't want to keep uh, dangling uh, access control data there. So so, so this is basically uh, next to label three it is what it's doing. Uh, so, so I delete not only the access control data for myself, but also for any other user who has uh, who, who has access control data to the metadata item you're deleting. So he, here two is deleting and why is just get user ID. So so that's an uh, example. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're um about to go over time, but we'll take if there's one or another question quick. Waiting in case anyone wants to take themselves off mute to ask a question. I would like to see the list of 15 plugins again. 
All right. Mm, I can uh, yeah I can go over these plugins a little bit, in, in, or may, maybe you can ask me questions. Well, um, maybe uh, uh, Carl can send out a, a contact information for you if people want to get in touch because I want to be respectful of the other speakers and make sure they have time to talk as well. Well, actually, actually no, I'm looking at that. We have, we have some time. We, we can adjust. Go ahead. Why don't, why don't you give a quick quick um, rundown? Uh, so, okay, so I'll, I'll give a quick rundown on these. Uh, so, so not all of these are very interesting. Some of these are like a polyview kind of thing. So if you have a database that doesn't have reg regular expression capabilities, so this regex QAP basically allows you to kind of do regex uh, programmatically. But then from the user's point of view though, the user will see a, a unified data store which has the regex regular expression capability. So for them, they, they, they don't know whether this capability is implement in your data in the database or or programmatically. So that's the nice thing about the, these things. Like mutable map, if you just want uh, something uh, in in memory, you can you can do this. And then there's uh, this cache. This cache is basically something you can you can use to uh, to make make your system run faster because because there's a translation cost when you, when you issue a query error language, it, it, it has to go go at, the, at the, all the databases, all the plugins, and and kind of translate the query error or query to the to different databases. So you don't want to do this every time they issue the same query. So you can just say, okay, I can put a cache here. This translation is for uh, for uh, for the policies. Uh, and this some QAP is for aggregation. So, so the nice thing about Query Arrow is that the core, the, the the service is actually very simple. The service doesn't even see multiple uh, QAPs. The server only sees one QAP. But because the QAP could be a some QAP, so under the some QAP, you can have multiple QAPs. So you can even say, that, like the server doesn't even do policy, right? The server doesn't do caching, and all, all these things are done in the QAPs. And this QAS QAP is very interesting. So this allows the the server to communicate the query error service to communicate with uh, one instance of query error service to communicate with another instance of query error uh, uh, service uh, over the internet through a uh, kind of QAP interface. So, so the service still oh it's, uh, oh I'm just talking to a QAP right but but the, the behind the QAP is actually another query error service. So this basically allows you to do a distributed query, uh, in in a sense. And uh, I guess this these elect search, all these things are for uh, for for uh, for database, and this is for file system. And there's some utility ones like uh, equal equal text. And uh, yeah, yeah. So so if Regan, if you have any uh, specific uh, ones that you want to uh, want me to talk more about, I can. I can talk about it. Uh, otherwise, I, I think that's a very brief rundown of this list. So the first question is federation mm -hmm. and using the QAS remoting service for that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, the, the federation is, is very primitive. It's, it's not as sophisticated as the IRAS federation. So uh, so. Uh, so like like Query Arrow doesn't handle any authentication or encryption. So the QS QAP is uh, basically allow you to uh, basically stand up multiple instances and kind of handle, kind of um, you know allows the kind of have like you know load multiple server to handle the same workload. So you can you can kind of scale out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but but so I, I specifically don't want to handle uh, authentication and uh, uh, encryption because I think that should be a one layer up and, uh, and uh, that shouldn't be part of the uh, this database uh, layer. Okay. Yes, well, yeah. Oops. Oops. Sorry, Andy, do you want to finish? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I I'm done. Yeah. Okay, with, with that, I think we do need to move on to make sure we have time for the other speakers. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zhu.